If the true airspeed of an aircraft is faster than the local speed of sound, the aircraft is moving faster than the weak pressure waves it is generating. To illustrate this concept, we need to imagine a source moving through the air, generating some representative weak pressure waves, and then stopping. The length of this line represents the true airspeed. Imagine we are plotting this on a piece of paper. If we draw a straight line from the point where the objects stop moving to form a tangent with the weak pressure waves, we have drawn a mark line. The mark line represents the limit which all the weak pressure waves have reached when the object stop moving. A line drawn from the position where the object started moving to the Mach line represents the local speed of sound. The angle between the true airspeed vector and the Mach line, mu, is called the Mach angle. You remember that the formula to calculate Mach number is the true airspeed divided by the local speed of sound, which, using trigonometry, is the hypotenuse divided by the opposite. Therefore, 1 over m equals the local speed of sound, the opposite, divided by the true airspeed, the hypotenuse. Now let's see how the Mach angle relates to the Mach number. The sine of the Mach angle is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. The opposite represents the local speed of sound, and the hypotenuse represents the true airspeed. Therefore, the sine of the Mach angle equals 1 divided by the Mach number. The conclusion to all these deliberations is that the greater the Mach number, the smaller the Mach angle. To put it another way, the Mach angle is inversely proportional to the Mach number. A written exam question may require that you remember that the Mach angle continues to decrease with increasing Mach number. Remember that weak pressure waves are spherical, and if we draw a series of Mach lines all the way round, we would end up with a Mach cone. The area inside the Mach cone is called the zone of influence. When flying at supersonic speeds, the Mach cone represents the limit of travel of the pressure disturbances created by the aircraft and anything forward of the Mark cone cannot be influenced by any pressure changes taking place within the Mark cone. None of this has any operational relevance for a transonic jet transport aircraft, but there are still one or two questions about it in the written exam. To finish off our study of high-speed flight, we'll take a look at the sonic bang. When an aircraft is flying faster than approximately Mach 1.2, it is classified as a supersonic aircraft. The bow wave and trailing edge shock waves on a supersonic aircraft cause a sudden and massive rise in air pressure. If these shock waves reach your ears, you will hear a very loud bang. In fact, a double bang. Breaking the sound barrier as flying at supersonic speeds is called, used to be common at air shows back in the 1950s and 60s. But in the UK, the practice was stopped because of the damage caused to windows and people's nerves. As you can see, the shock waves, and hence the sonic bang, travel over the ground at the true ground speed of the aircraft. No jet transport aircraft on the civil register in 2011 can fly this fast. Nevertheless, a question about the speed at which the sonic bang travels over the ground exists in the written exam.